Well, the U.S. has arrested 135 people at the gates of the White House for what officials call civil disobedience. The protesters demanded Washington withdraw the U.S. troops and end the war in Afghanistan. The protesters were dragged away and arrested by police despite having coordinated the protest with the authorities. Among the detainees are scores of veterans from the Second World War, the Vietnam War, as well as Iraq and Afghanistan. The protesters say they were taken to a police depot, searched and questioned. They were then forced to choose whether to pay $100 and plead guilty or plead not guilty and go to court. For more on that story, we're now joined by Ray McGovern, who is a former CIA analyst who joins us via satellite from Washington. Mr. McGovern, as always, thank you for joining our broadcast. Now, when asked about protesting, you said, and I'm quoting you now, there's a saying that hope is the twin. Augustine said hope has two daughters, anger and courage. Well, we, what we've seen in our policy is anger, but anger isn't enough. You've got to have courage, end quote. Could you expand on that, please? Well, yes, it's, uh, it's very anger-inducing to watch the kinds of things that were reported just now in your show, innocent civilians being branded militants and being killed in the uh, certain parts of Pakistan and, of course, all over Afghanistan. Um, so anger is extremely appropriate, and uh, Thomas Aquinas said that it's a virtue. What do you do with that anger? Well, you try to inform your fellow citizens. You write, you speak, and when nobody listens or nobody hears, then there comes a time, as Martin Luther King Jr. said, where you have to put your body into it. If you really believe strongly that we need to get our country back on course. And so that's what Daniel Ellsberg and uh, Chris Hedges, Medea Benjamin, Colleen Rowley and I decided we needed to do. And we were amazed that immediately, 135 mostly veterans from from previous wars joined us and what's the difference well veterans know what war is like Obama doesn't know what war is like neither do most of his advisors we've been there done that it's got to stop the killing has to stop and if that means we have to be in prison well that's the only honorable place to be Right. Now, sir, you also chose to plead not guilty when you were arrested, and you will have to appear in court in the future to defend yourself. Why did you choose the harder of the two options? Well, number one, I didn't bring $100 with me on purpose. That's the trite excuse. The real purpose here is to get this issue before the American people. Uh, we want to plead uh, not guilty because there are sins worse than standing in front of the White House. And those sins include waging war in an area where there's no prospect of victory or even a peaceable outcome. That's, those are the, the issues here. And what some people call a necessity defense has been successfully tried in many cases, one out in Nevada recently, in other words, uh, the trespass charges out there were put aside when the judge realized uh, that uh, something transcendent was really in, in, in play here. In other words, trespass, if there's a no trespass sign on a property and the, the house is burning, children are trying to get out, what do you do? Do you drive by and say, oh, there's no trespassing there? No, you go in there and you rescue the children. We're trying to rescue the children, whether it's in Afghanistan, Iraq, God forbid, Iran, Pakistan now included. We're trying to rescue the children. And we all have children, and many of us, like I, have eight grandchildren. And we want America to, to measure up to the kind of country we were privileged to grow up in, and it's a far cry from that now. Right now, sir, the protest you were a part of has been called, I'm quoting now, the largest civil resistance action ever organized by former military personnel, end quote. Will it affect U.S. foreign policy, especially in Afghanistan? We are hoping that uh, this kind of uh, physical protest, where people are willing to put their bodies on the line, coupled with the information that is now available from links such as WikiLinks, we, I'm sent out WikiLinks, uh, but uh, uh, the uh, Julian Assange and uh, uh, WikiLeaks is what they call that operation. Um, for the first time, 
uh, Americans are able to find out what's going on. Now, what's going on in their name, I should add. Now, it's easy enough to say, well, Americans don't care. Uh, Americans really can't be bothered. Uh, Americans can't handle the truth. Well, that remains to be proved. You know why? Because they haven't been given the truth. So QED, you know, what remains to be demonstrated is that Americans don't care about the truth, and I think they do. And now they have a chance to get the truth and see the atrocities that are being done in our name, not only from the army uh, in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, the ground truth reports, no one questions the authenticity of these reports, but also from the State Department cables, which daily are revealing atrocities that most Americans will not abide done in their name. For example, Pfizer uh, Pharmaceutical experimenting with experimental drugs on Nigerian children without the permission of their parents. These things go on, the State Department knows about it, and they just don't care. We need to care. All right, we will have to leave it there for now. That was Ray McGovern, former CIA analyst, joining us via satellite from Washington. Sir, as always, we appreciate your comments here at Press TV.